Okay, we're back today, and today we're going to go deeper into the world of pointers. And I have an example here. Let's take a look at it. It's uh, an example of a character pointer, C. And what I'm going to do here on line 26 is I'm going to create, using the new keyword, I'm going to create five new character locations in memory. So remember before, we could create one new memory location of a certain type. Well now, if we use array notation here, like that, with the square brackets, we can actually allocate uh, as many as we want at a time. However, I have to make one thing explicitly clear. When we allocate memory in this fashion on line 26, please note that the memory is contiguous. Okay? So one, two, three, four, five locations, and, and, and these are all chars. Now this is only, a char takes up only one byte. So uh, five bytes of RAM or five bytes of memory is a very small amount of memory. But if I change this number from here to five to 5,000, right, uh, or five million, whatever it might be, please understand that it has to be contiguous. In other words, you cannot, the, you can't allocate, or it's not that you can't allocate, but it's that the operating system is not going to say, okay, you know, if you're, let's say, for example, if you're out trying to allocate 5,000, it's not going to say, here's 3,000 bytes, and here's another, you know, 2,000 bytes somewhere else in memory. No, it can't do that. All 5,000, if you ask for 5,000 bytes, has to be continuous in one piece. That's important because if you ask for a big enough piece of memory, if you request it, and then it, it could fail. So uh, I'm not going to delve too much into the failure situation, but just to say that uh, you know, for five bytes, we're not going to have a problem. But obviously, if you try to allocate something like five billion bytes, it, it could fail and your program could crash. Um, but that's kind of beyond the scope of this course, so we'll, we won't cover it. However, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the strn copy. And since it's a C function, I can actually man it. So strn cpy. So now you can see it says strn copy function is similar to string copy. String copy doesn't do checking. That's how you get buffer overruns. So with string copy, if you put something in to the destination that's bigger than what the destination can hold, you're going to have a buffer overrun. And that's a bad source of bugs. Many programs have vulnerabilities that say, you know, buffer overrun vulnerability because um, you're potentially writing to memory that doesn't belong to you and it's a bad situation. Now, strn copy is a little bit better in that you can actually specify how much you want to write to it, which is the third argument. So, uh, if we go back to the code, notice that I'm saying, hey, listen, um, now in this case, I'm saying five, okay, because there's only five bytes here. I can't write more than five, so I'm going to say maximum five. Um, in this case, it's three, but usually, like, what I'd like to do here is I'd actually like to change this to five minus one. And I'll tell you the reason for that. The reason why I like to change this to five minus one is because, you see, C has a size of five. So that means the maximum I should be able to write to this is four. Why only four? Well, it's because the last character should be my null byte, which is uh, 
terminates my string. So in other words, like um, in this example up here, right? You can see it here. I'm actually writing, I'm trying to write six characters, A, B, C, D, E, F. So obviously that's not going to fit in five. But I actually want to write four because my fifth one is going to be the null byte. Okay, so now that we kind of understand how strn copy is working, right? The first argument is the destination, the second argument is the source, and the third argument is how many um, characters or bytes we're going to, to write to the source. And as I said, usually what you do is you specify one less than what will fit into, into the destination. In this case, the destination is 5, so we usually, we'll usually do like 5 minus 1, just to ensure that the last character is in fact the null byte, because we want our C strings terminated with null bytes. Now, um, if we kind of wrote our own version of string copy, it would look something like this. Although, this is not a perfect solution. You can see here, I'm trying to figure out which one is less. Um, the string that I'm, that I'm and, I, and I've accepted a string here, so this is definitely not C, it's C++. And I'm um, checking which one is smaller. I want to know if N or uh, the size of this string is smaller. And whichever one is smaller, I'm going to iterate through um, S, the string, and assign it to P, which is the destination. Now I can do that in one of two ways. I can either do, um, you know, dereference and do pointer arithmetic, or I can just use square brackets. And then after I'm done that, I'm going to tack on an extra uh, null byte at the end. Notice I can do that because I instantiated my x outside the for loop. And so because that's outside the for loop, it's, it'll still exist after the for loop. And so x will be incremented past the, I mean, when, when you finish the for loop. And then my last character will be the null. By the way, this isn't a perfect implementation. Uh, there are problems with this. But just for fun, uh, let's have a look at here in the man page for strn copy. Look, it says that a simple implementation of strn copy might be, and there you go, and they provide one for you. Now in this case, what's interesting, they're obviously doing this in, in just C, not C++, so this is a constant character pointer, right, which is a C string. And notice here, they also, they're using size t, not unsigned int as I was. And also, Notice for the um, for loop, notice it's such an interesting for loop because they're actually using an AND for the condition. Remember, this is just a condition, so this is going to return true or false here, right? So while i is less than n, AND source i is not equal to null byte. So that means if, this, if the um, source C string that you're sending to the destination to copy it. If you hit this, if you hit the null byte, then stop, right? They have that. Then what's interesting is, okay, notice, notice once again, this is created outside of the for loop. That's essential because notice after the for loop, there's another for loop that has no initial part but it has a condition. It says while i is less than n, i plus plus, and then set everything after that to um, the null byte. Okay. So I mean, this is a cle this is clever, but uh, that's not exactly the way I did it. And I know mine is not gonna. Uh, mine doesn't do exactly the same thing, but it's slightly similar. Uh, in any case, so the other point that I really strongly wanted to make here is 
strlen is different from size of. So strlen will actually show you how many, um, like, so if, if I, let's, let's uncomment this one first. Okay, so now you notice I'm only putting in ABC. So watch when I run this. I'm getting strlen is 3. Now why is that? Well, it's because strlen stops copying when it hits the null byte. And I can show you that here. Watch. Man strlen. And it says, uh, calculates the length of the string excluding the terminating null byte. Okay, so when you hit the null byte, when you're counting and when you hit the null byte, that's how long strlen will say that the string, that's how long the string is, it'll say the string is. So, um, you know, if I, let's say for example, if I comment this line out, oops, let's try that again. Okay, and I, I copy, I try to copy six, Let's see how many will be copied and let's see what str len is going to report. So notice that I'm only really copying four because the fifth one is the null byte. And by the way, uh, the reason why you're seeing things printed more than once here is because down here I have, I'm printing things with printf first, okay, so you can print using C style printing. And I can also print C. By the way, just think for a minute, what is C? C is a character pointer. Okay? And I've just created five of them. So this is essentially a C string, an array of five characters. But when I send that pointer to C out, C out knows what to do with it. It knows that, you know, it's a string and it'll print the string out just like printf is able to print the string out. This is actually wrong. This shouldn't say first letter. Uh, that should say uh, just the string. That'll print C string C. So let's correct that. Uh, C string, or maybe I should go like this. There. OK? Um, and, of course, at the end, finally, we have delete. Now notice, because we called new with brackets, I need to call delete with brackets. Okay? This is important because I've, I'm allocating five bytes here, and I have to free five bytes. Now, I don't have to put the five in the brackets, but I do need the, the square brackets to specify that I'm not like if I if I did if I just did this, then that's not right. Okay, that's not going to free everything. I need to to free it as I allocated it, and so oops, <laughs> that's not right. Let's try that again. There, that's the correct way to free the memory on line 37. Okay, so. Um, once again, the other things that I just wanted to mention to you was getting used to this similar behavior of using pointer arithmetic and dereferencing and the square brackets in arrays. Remember, once again, an array is, the, the variable of an array is a pointer. And we're going to get into that further in the next example. Okay, here's my next example. And actually, I've written this program uh, twice. Well, it's, it's the same program. All I've done is the left-hand side here, it's a mix of C and C++. And I'll specifically tell you what is C++. But on the right-hand side, this program is solely written in C. It's kind of nice to be able to write something completely 100% C. And um, you know we don't need the C++ compiler f for this one over here. We can just, just use GCC. Let's, let's delve into it and let's see what we're doing here. 
Um, I just wanted to give you guys a few examples of some C strings and how we can make them. We've done this before. Okay, I can make a C string like that. And hello is five letters, and the and uh, the sixth one is going to be the null. Here too, if I do it like this, world is the same number of letters as hello, but it's also going to be uh, six bytes as well. Last one for the null as well. And of course, um, I can print the size of W, and in fact, I will get six there. Now, the next thing that I do is here, unlike this hello here, this one is a constant character pointer. So this one, I cannot change. This is now frozen, whereas uh, this one, I could change the letters in this one individually. Okay? So if this is the way to create one C string, then obviously the way to create more than one would be to use an array. And that's what that syntax is for. And I'm actually creating them or instantiating them right here with the curly braces. And so the size of fruits is going to be one, two, three, four, five. I have five things in the fruits variable. And they're all C strings. So just think about that for a minute. And let's go back and I want to refresh your memory about something. Remember, the variable which is an array is a pointer itself. That means fruits here is a pointer. So what does fruits point to? Guess what? Fruits points to char pointers. So that means that fruits is a pointer pointer. It's a pointer to char pointers. Well, guess what? I can recreate that behavior here on line 11. So now I've said, I've, I've made a variable called f. And of course, essentially what I'm doing is I'm kind of recreating what I've done on line 10. But now I'm doing it on the, on the heap. So line 10 is going to create these guys all on the stack. But now I'm doing it using new. OK? So what I've done here is I've said, hey, listen, give me five character pointers. So essentially, now, this is kind of a, an interesting situation, OK? So let's actually draw a picture of this. Because I think unless you see a picture, it's kind of hard to grasp. It might be hard to grasp what's going on. Here it is. Take a look, guys. Here is f. And f is a pointer. And it points to 5. Because look at line 12, right? f is pointing to 5 character pointers. So each of these guys are character pointers. That means that each one of these guys points to something else. Remember, these are all pointers. F is a pointer pointer. It's a pointer to pointers. Okay. So essentially, what's going to be in these boxes? Not characters, no. Memory addresses. But now, look what happens. Now let's go down into this for loop, OK? And we're iterating from 0 to 4, obviously, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's, that has a length of 5. But the first line I'm saying is I'm saying fx. So fx is this guy right here, right? That's fx. Now, I could do that in a different way. I could say, you know, dereference, and I could say, um, what is it, um, f plus x, but I don't need to do that. I can just use f, oops, not like that. I can just use fx 
that's the same thing. We all know that. We've learned that before. But now look what I'm doing. I'm saying, hey, allocate, return to me the address, right? And assign it to f of x, but return to me eight character, uh, an array of eight characters. So if I go over here, now what it's saying is, and by the way, x obviously is zero first time through, so now I'm gonna do this. Okay, and now I've got, I hope that's eight, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yay, okay, perfect. So now in each of these boxes, okay, I can now stick a character. Notice, I, and so I do that for each one. And once I've created it, I go string copy, look at this line, string copy fruits x, which I've defined up here, right? The first one is banana. That's the source, that's my destination. These are both pointers, okay? But, and then I'm saying copy x, uh, sorry, eight minus one, because I'm using str, n copy. So obviously the last one's, you know, I'm not gonna copy more. Uh, and if my, if my string happens to be more, it'll get truncated. But here's the beautiful thing, is that this is now uh, banana. Did I spell that right? Yeah. And then there. Okay? Yeah, that's six plus the is seven. Perfect. So you see how this is working? And then, of course, I print it. And that's fine. But... When I go to the next one, now x is 1, this one, I allocate another 8, okay? I think you get the picture here, right? It's the, it's the same thing. And this time, I put in apple. So, essentially, what is this? It's kind of like, think of it as a two-dimensional character array, right? Think of it as a two-dimensional character array because essentially it's a, an array of C strings, right? But I've done it all using pointers. Now, when this is all done, I have to go through and I have to call delete for each time I called new. So quick question, how many times did I call this new? Well, five times. So I have to call delete five times. For Remember, each time you call new, you have to call delete. And also, I actually allocated eight characters, so I have to delete that array of eight characters. And then, I'm actually setting this to, I could use null PTR here, right? Why don't I put that in the comments here? I could say, or I could use uh, null PTR. Um, now that's just good practice, right? That's just good practice. However, notice that after I have deleted all these guys, so if we go back to here, so once these are all set, then I delete, what am I deleting? I'm deleting these pointers, okay? These guys, I'm deleting these guys. What I'm, and what, remember what that does is it tells the operating system that I don't own, this memory is no longer mine anymore, okay? However, notice that this memory, these pointers were also allocated on the heap here on line 12. Those also have to be freed. And I do that here on line 25. But please be careful, and this is actually super important. The order in which you free stuff matters. In other words, we have to undo the memory allocations in the same order going backwards. So. This was allocated last, so it has to be freed first. 
Then, the first, then, like what came before, notice line 25 comes after this for loop here, right? So line 25 is deleting the pointers here from line 12. So line 25 is undoing line 12, OK? And line 21 is undoing uh, what we did on line 15. But notice line 15 happens inside a loop, so we, and we did it five times, so we have to do this five times in a loop. You understand what I mean? So we're looping through, getting rid of each one of these one by one, freeing them, and then we can free these guys in one shot on line 25. And that, those were created here with new char pointer 5. OK? So question now is, how is this version over here on the right-hand side any different? Well, you know what? I thought, I thought I'd have some fun. And I said, you know, this is like the code here on the left is so close to being pure C. So what is not? What is C++ in this? And the answer is, well, uh, do we have any C outs here? No, we don't have any C outs. The only thing that is C++ here is new and delete. So line 12, line 15, and line 21, and line 25 are the only things that are actually C++ code. Because in C, you don't actually say new and delete. The underlying constructs, by the way, which actually C++ calls under the hood, is actually called malloc and free. So if you come over here, let's take a look. Let's traverse over to this guy now. Here, let's try this. Oops, let's move over to this code. And so now on the right-hand side, you can see that instead of saying new char pointer 5, OK, for f, we actually, so remember this. Now, th this is, um, remember, malloc is a C function, right? So hey, you know what? Since it's C, it should be in the operating system. Let's check it out. And there it is. Notice the type. OK, so here is the include that we need to include for malloc. But notice that what type of a pointer does malloc return? It returns a void pointer. Now, we haven't gone over this yet, but a void pointer is a pointer that has no type associated with it. Okay. Also, notice that size t is the, and actually it says down here, uh, size t is the number of bytes that we need. Where does it say that here? So notice here, um, it says malloc allocates size bytes. So this is how many bytes it's going to allocate. Notice that this is slightly different, well, significantly different than how new does it. So just getting back to the pointer type, if this is returning an, a pointer that has no type associated with it, that means we're going to have to cast it into the correct type. OK, so now look at my code. Here, I'm going to, and this is the square brackets here, I'm actually going to be casting the, the address that malloc returns to a char star star. Why? Because f is a char star star. Char, f is a char pointer pointer. So I have to cast it to the right type. Now here's the big question. What the heck is this? Why do I go 5 times 8? Well, remember, unlike this, OK, um, here, I'm saying, give me five character pointers. But here, I'm saying, give me five, or sorry, not give me five, give me how much memory. I need to specify the memory explicitly. Well, now I have to do a little bit of other calculation because I have to say, listen, this is a 64-bit operating system. And because it's a 64-bit operating system, if I have 8 bits per byte, right? Let's do the math here. Let me show you. If I have 8 bit, I can't even, I can't write here. Let's try this again. 8 bits equals 1 byte. Okay. 
If you have a, what's called, most operating systems now are 64-bit operating systems. So that means that an, a memory location, an address, requires 64 bits. Well, how many, how many bits, how many bytes, sorry, how many of these guys do you require for 64 bits? Well, you can see if each byte takes 8 bits, then 8 times 8 is going to equal 64. That means a memory location is equal to 8 bytes. Can you see that? So now, if each memory location requires 8 bytes, now let's go back to the code, how many memory locations do I want? I want 5 of them. So that means I require 40 bytes of memory to store five memory locations in a 64-bit operating system. See, see, how, see how C is so much lower level than C++? So now, when we go in, um, so okay, so basically, you know, line 11 is the same as line 12 over here. But now when we go in, this, instead of calling new, we're going to call malloc again. Of course, it stands for memory allocate, right? But now think about this. How much memory is required for a, for a character? And the answer is only one. So I could have gone, like, I don't have to do this, right? It's kind of stupid to multiply something by one. Um, but essentially, I could do that to say, listen, yeah, I need eight of them and each one is going to be one byte. Now, for example, if these were integers, okay, if these were ints, then I'd have to go 8 times 4. You understand? So it's the number, it's, it's how many you need and the size of that type in bytes. So perhaps I'll just leave this as 8 times 1. I think it makes more, I think it's more clear, right? Here I have 5 items, 8 bytes each, and here I have eight items of chars, which is one byte each, right? One byte per char. Anyways, I do the same code. This, the rest of the code is exactly the same except for free. Notice here in free, we don't actually use uh, the square brackets as we did before. We just specify the memory location, and we do free here with the memory location. So um, let's, let's save these guys and let's run them. And I'll show you how we're gonna uh, how we're going to uh, code them. So, if if it was the um, the C plus plus one, okay. So that was I think three D dot CC, and I'm just gonna go like this, and I'll go three D, and that should be good enough. Let's compile it. Oops, I get a warning here. Uh, what's going on? Okay, I had a, a bug here, or I just forgot a syntax here. I actually forgot to put um, a semicolon here. I think that was my problem. So let's save that. Okay, so I had to, yeah, I needed to fix that. And also, the other, I was getting some uh, issues with um, the type field here. I had to make this uh, uh, long unsigned. And um, just for fun, we actually went to Wikipedia and took a look at all the different types of um, type fields for print F. And uh, that's kind of helpful, although they don't actually have LU here, which is long unsigned int. But um, going back to our code, if we run this now, Notice we'll get six, we'll print six, and then the you notice the six is coming from here, the size of W, right? That was that six. And then we're gonna have all of these guys print out. Now, just to make sure that this in fact is working properly, let's go back to our um, let's quit out of this and let's Let's compile this, okay, like this. All right, it compiles fine. Now, let's run this with Valgrind to see if we have any memory leaks in this, because we shouldn't. 
Okay. So, and now when we run this, notice it says all, all heat blocks were freed, no leaks are possible. Zero errors from zero contexts. So this is perfect. We've freed all the memory that we have allocated in this and we're good. So we did this the proper way, okay? And once again, I just want to restress that the order in which we deleted things is important, okay? Oops, not that one, this one. So let's take this now one step further and let's go on to another example. No, actually we forgot. Wait, we can't go on. We have to actually uh, try the C version of this. So here we go, let's try the C version. Remember what the C version was? It was 3B.C, okay? So this was the version that used malloc and free. Now let's see if this one actually is going to work. Now, in order to compile this one, I'm not gonna use G++, I'm gonna use GCC, and I'm going to use like this, and I'm gonna go like that, and I'll go 3B. So now, let's see if GCC is able to compile this. So I'm now using the C compiler, not the C++ compiler, okay? Because I didn't go G++. Oh, and we got a whole bunch of problems here, which, we'll, which we can fix. Give me a second here. Okay, so the main thing I forgot, right, is if I'm gonna use malloc and free, I'm gonna have to include std uh, lib.h. So going back to my code, I put that in here, and um, I've, include, I've included std lib, okay? I've included uh, string.h for strn copy, and I've included std io for print f. Okay, so now let's save that and now let's try compiling it and notice again I'm using the C compiler and voila it works and if I run it exactly the same output as the C++ program uh, and now let's try using valgrind on it please please no errors no errors I mean no no memory leaks hopefully uh, and here we go Ta-da! Okay, so we were successful. We freed everything perfectly, just as we were supposed to. And so you can see that our C program now works A-OK. -okay, and I'm a, I'm a happy camper. So that's a nice example of allocating things. Now, now when I say allocating things, you know, I've allocated pretty much everything here on the heap, okay? Um, this, this wasn't. Line 11, or sorry, so I should say line 10, that wasn't. But that's what I was assigning to things on the heap. So, um, there you go. So before I show you the next example, I wanted to kind of go over something here. And that is that, do you remember when I, I said to you that this was an array of C strings. So essentially what I have, if each character array, if each one of these character arrays is an array of characters, then if I have an array of C strings, then it's, an, it's like a two-dimensional, it's a 2D character array. So in other words, each one of these letters has like a, it has like two indices that it could be associated with. So for example, like the, let's say the L here in Apple, right? What would be the, the two indices for the L in Apple? Well, look, zero, one, two, three. Right? But notice its, it's first index is 1 here because it's the second pointer that F points to. And then it's the third location 
that, the, that this pointer here points to. Or sorry, did I say third? It's fourth. Its index is <coughs> three. But it's <coughs> so, so the indices of this would be like one and three for the L. I know it kind of conv looks convoluted here, but now I think if I show you my next example, this might actually make more sense. Take a look. So here, I am now on line 7 here. I'm allocating uh, characters, but I'm, I'm, I'm allocating a 2D character array. Okay, these are not these are not pointers. But the cool thing here is that M, this little M here, believe it or not, is actually a pointer pointer. It doesn't look like it right now, but it is. And just to prove it to you, what I did is I said, hey, look, let's make a, a pointer pointer as we did before with F in the previous example. And this time I'm calling it capital M. Notice the difference between lowercase M and capital M, okay? Capital M is being allocated on the heap here. And so I now iterate through those three and I get those addresses again. So this is very similar to what I did before. In fact, let's, let's erase this and let's start, let's start over, okay? So M is a character pointer pointer again okay and th then we have it's pointing to three one two three three char pointers okay and those char pointers are being assigned here to a uh, six element character array. So essentially, like this, one, two, three, and each one of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. And these have indices 0, 1, 2. So now, uh, I also create uh, some uh, x and y integers. You can just ignore this part for a while, because I tried to get the input from um, user input. But then I decided it would just be faster if I assigned it, uh, hard coded it. And so I create three uh, constant character pointers, right, which can't be changed. Kathy, Billy Idol and Henry Winkler. And then I use string copy to copy those guys to my destinations. Now I'm, I'm copying them here to ABC, those three uh, strings, to M. And I'm doing it again for capital M. So notice that um, lowercase m is created on the stack, but uppercase m is on the heap using new and using pointers. So um, now when I go into this while true loop, I simply ask for uh, x and y, OK? And I have like a special input to, to stop the loop. But this is what I wanted to show you. <laughs> this, this honestly, like this looks kind of disgusting. But I want you to understand what this actually means. So remember here, M, let's go back to our, okay, so let's, let's say this is, this is little m, okay, this is little m. So essentially, this is our first x variable, and this is our second y variable. So now, if you go m plus x, well, m plus x, m is pointing to the first one, so if you go m plus x, well, that's going to give you one of these guys here, right? This one, this one, or this one. These are all pointers, OK? 
Now, therefore, uh, I'm doing pointer arithmetic and I'm dereferencing it. Now, when I dereference it, what does this give me? It gives me one of these guys. Now, what are they? Well, they're pointers. Because as you can see here, um, here, right? I'm each one of those guys is equal to a new uh, char array. And remember what arrays are, right? Arrays are pointers. And and think about you know, uh, oh yeah, exactly. So that, sorry, I didn't mean to point to this one. I meant to point to this one here. These are all char pointers, and there's three of them. So therefore, now this is going to give me an address. It's like, for example, if x is 1, I'm going to get this address here. OK? But now I want more than that. What if now, if x, is, if x was 1 and y is equal to 2, well, then now I need this guy here, right? Because I'm going to go 0, 1, 2. Whatever, whatever letter is, I want to get that guy. So now, think of this as being a pointer. Now I have to add something to this, the y. Sorry, I didn't mean to use x here. Uh, let's just use a big dot. OK? I don't want that. If I use an x, I just meant that particular character. So now if I go y plus y, now remember, right? this whole thing is a pointer. So now I have to go this pointer plus y, and then I have to dereference that. And so that's where I'm getting this syntax from on line 47. But I have to say, this, is, this syntax is not easy to read. That is precisely why we prefer this type of syntax. It's so much easier to read and understand. But understand that this is what's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing, but that's what's going on. And it, not only does it work for the, the one, the little m, on the stack, but it also works for the big M on the heap. And both syntaxes, obviously, I think it's pretty easy to choose which one you'd like to work with. In any case, um, just as in the last example, we delete uh, M, capital M, we delete the ones that we allocated on uh, this line here. And we have to use brackets because we use brackets to allocate them. And then finally, we have to delete M uh, from line 9. And we do that below on line 59. And that's the end of it. So if I run this program, you'll see what happens here. Uh, it asks for coordinates. And let's say, for example, uh, I think the first one was Kathy. So I'll say the first one, and I'll say the second one, and that's the T, C-A-T-H-Y, OK? So uh, let's quit this now. And um, there, it deletes everything. And just to be sure you know that it's uh, not leaking memory. Well, actually, here, before we go in and try and see if it's leaking memory, one last try. Look, for example, uh, let's try and grab, let's say the, uh, let's say, let's grab the E, because there's, well, remember, it's not going to grab everything, right? Because it's only going to grab the first five characters. Like, we're not getting either idle or winkler. So let's grab this E here. So that's actually 0, 1, 2, and 0, 1. So 2, 1 should be the E. Let's try it. So uh, 2 and a 1 gives me the E from Henry. OK. Um, so now that you've seen that, 
we can now, let's go and check to see if this thing is um, leaking any memory. And I think, so the name of this program was uh, for array. Val grind, and we'll go dot, and then, okay, let's see it. So give me, we'll go 2, 1, and there's the E, negative 1, 0, and there it is. And it says all heaps, all heap blocks were freed, no leaks are possible. So there you go. So this is really great. And um, this is really we're understanding how pointers and how uh, memory, how we can access memory, and, and this is more of low-level programming. And of course, we can do all this stuff that we're doing here, let's say, for example, using a vector of strings. That's a totally C++ uh, program, and of course, it's actually easier to use. It's higher level, but honestly, it's really nice to be able to know how to do things in C at the low level. So, after all, you know, somebody's got to program these higher level languages. But there are other advantages to C as well. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this lesson.